What if I told you that Nika is Jesus in the One Piece world, who is also Joy Boy, who is also the devil, whose name is Oars? Yeah, in One Piece, Jesus is the devil, who is also the sun god, who is also Joy Boy. Trust me, this might sound extremely insane right now, but when you hear the evidence that I'm going to lay out, you'll become as much of a believer as I am. Oda has been trolling us the whole time, literally. He's foreshadowed this since the first volume of One Piece and has left many clues since then as well. By the way, in case you're new to the channel, when I say all these titles go back to Oars, I don't mean the Oars that Moria had, but I mean Oars the First, whose head lies at Onigashima. Remember, according to Oars Jr's Jolly Roger, he is actually Oars the Third, and his dad, who was Oars the Second, became a zombie by Moria in Thriller Bark, and his dad, who was Oars the First, was Joy Boy, and his skull is at Onigashima. I explain this in more detail in my other videos, so go check them out after this one. In this video, I will lay out all the evidence that Oars is the sun god and Jesus in four sections. Also, I'd like to mention that if you've already watched my other videos, this one will connect all of them and I have a lot more crazy evidence that I haven't laid out yet. So stay tuned throughout the whole thing because it's gonna be a crazy one. Last thing before I start, I just wanted to claim that I don't believe everything I say is true about the real world. I'm only describing the world of One Piece, not real life. I'm not trying to offend anyone or promote any religious beliefs. If you can't take what I say in the video, then I recommend not watching because it may be a little too much to handle. Just wanted to clarify myself and now let's get into it. First, let me explain how Urs is the sun god of the One Piece world. Well, the most obvious clue would be that Orz's name in Japanese is based off of the Norse's sun god's name. Next, let's talk about Skypiea. Well, we already pretty much know that Skypiea, Wano, and the Ancient Kingdom are connected, am I right? Wano Country was called the Country of Gold hundreds of years ago, just like how Shandora is the City of Gold. The Kazuki Crest looks like it has a winged figure, just like how the Skypeans have wings. It also has a sun with exactly 8 circles surrounding it, just like the Shandians have an almost identical symbol. Notice how there seems to be something that resembles an Oni skull on top of the sign, which also by the way translates to God, but we'll get more into that in a bit. Anyways, this shows that Wano and Shandora are connected, and they are also both connected to Joy Boy and Nika, who I think is Oars. In Nolan's backstory, we see Moose say that she is about to meet the sun god. Notice how on the sun god's altar of human sacrifice, there are signs of god that have oni skulls, or at least skulls, that are supposed to represent onis. The skull may not exactly be an oni, but I believe it is supposed to resemble Urs since he's the sun god of the world. The skulls that are on the top of the signs of god look exactly like the skull that the beast pirates used to represent onis. Since it represents onis for the beast pirates, it's probably the same thing for the shandians as well. On top of this, the stone layout of the sacrifice altar is clearly cut out to be Urs. The bottom of the mouth looks exactly like Orz's teeth and jaw. This sun god ritual is based off of the Aztec sun god ritual, which was a blood sacrifice ritual for the sun god Quetzalcoatl. This isn't too important right now, but it will be a key point later on in my video connecting it all with Jesus. In case you haven't watched my other video on how Orz is the god throughout the world, the Shandians also have Orz statues throughout all of Upper Yard. Yet again, you can tell it's a statue of an ancient giant because of the jawline and bottom lip, just like the stone ritual engraving. The Shandians also have Oars masks, which the leaders wear, just like how the people of Wano wear Oni masks, even at the Fire Festival. It's pretty weird that the people of Wano wear Oni masks on their sacred night, since they should hate the Oni race because of what Kaido did to them. They most likely wear Oni masks on their holy day because it's a tradition passed down from the Void Century. All these traditions are passed down because Oars used to be the king of the ancient kingdom. I also find it kind of funny how the Skypeans specifically worship an Oars statue that they call Verth. Konis tells Luffy that this specific statue is sacred to the Skypeans and is their idol of worship. Now why would Orz's name be based off of the Norse sun god's name, be worshipped as a sun god by the Shandians, have statues and masks that represent him in ancient cultures, and be worshipped as a god to the Skypeans? Only one conclusion makes sense out of all of this. He is the sun god. Another clue that's hidden in plain sight by Oda is in chapter 232's cover page. In this cover page, you can see how Oda made the sign say Route 666. 666 is the devil's number according to the bible. It's the number of the beast just like how Oars is the beast in One Piece. Well on top of this, you can also see how Oda wrote the name Apollo in this cover page. In case you didn't know, Apollo is the sun god in Greek mythology. Apollo is a sun god with horns just like Oars. Oda put the number 666 and Apollo in the same chapter cover that has a name describing Luffy. At this time, Luffy is the hundred million dollar man. All these things are connected to each other. Okay, so now that we know that Urz is most likely the sun god, 
Now to the evidence that he is also Jesus in the One Piece world. Well, we know Jesus does exist in One Piece since Bartholomew Kuma has a Bible and we continuously see Jesus crosses throughout the world. There are also many biblical references like the Noah and the Adam tree. On top of this, the Bible in One Piece has a sun and wings on it which shows it's probably tied to the ancient kingdom in some way. Okay, well in real life, crosses represent Jesus, the Son of God. Notice how in One Piece the crosses don't look like normal crosses, but instead look like it's two bones crossing. You can clearly see the outlines of two bones. It's meant to specifically look like a crossbones and not a normal cross because that's the exact symbol that represents oars. Notice how in Orz's clothing he has three skulls and a crossbones that looks exactly like the crossbones portrayed throughout the whole world as a religious symbol. Remember the skull and crossbones that Orz wears because it's a key point to what I'll be discussing next. The next big hint from Oda of Orz being Jesus has to do with Bing Sake and the Skull and Crossbones logo also known as Jolly Rogers. First of all, Oda puts an Oni looking figure on the cross at the end of Thriller Bark. I believe this is a hint that shows that the Crossbones is dedicated to Orz. This Oni is from the Rumbar Pirates Jolly Roger. The Rumbar Pirates were known for singing Bing Sake. Many people, myself included, believe that Bing Sake was a song from the Void Century and the Ancient Kingdom since it has the lines, The Merry Evening Sun. The birds sing as they draw circles in the sky, and never ending, ever wandering, our funny traveling tale. All these lines are important to exposing the truth of the One Piece world, but I want to talk about another line other than these ones. Bing Sake has a line that says flying the proud school on our flags and sails. This line is dedicated to Joy Boy because every pirate flag in One Piece came from him. In Volume 1, at the end of Chapter 2, Oda puts this page in. This page tells us the origin of the Jolly Roger. The final origin that he hints at says that Jolly Rogers came from Old Roger, which was another name for the devil. Now who is the devil in the One Piece world? That's right, it's Oars. Oars, Joy Boy, the Sun God, the Devil. Jesus is the founder of the Jolly Roger and of the cross. Pirate flags originating from him makes a lot of sense due to the fact that he has skulls and crossbones on his clothing. What if the crossbones on Jolly Rogers are actually the same as the crossbones that represent Jesus? They both go back to oars. If you don't think this is true, then check this out. Notice how on some of the only pictures of the Bible, there's a cross under where it says the word Bible, and what is on that cross? Yup, a Jolly Roger. This proves that the cross symbol from the Bible and Jolly Rogers on pirate flags have the same meaning. This is also most likely why Bartholomew has the same logo on his clothing. You can clearly see the layout of a cross with the Jolly Roger. It's the same logo as the one on the Bible which suits him since he's the one who carries it all over the place. If you still think all of this is a stretch, then explain this. How come in the manga, Big Mom's wedding cake design has skulls and crosses, but then in the anime, it's skulls and crossbones instead? Why would they change this detail? Like it makes no sense. The only reason I could think of would be that Oda told them to change it, to make it a hint for the readers that the crossbones and cross is the same thing. We also see Jesus pieces having ties with the devil since the very beginning. In Romance Dawn, the first time we learn about what devil fruits are, devil fruits are put in the shape of a cross. It probably all ties back to the devils of One Piece, but I'll make my devil fruit theory in another video. Another hint that connects the cross with oars is from the Shandians' tents. Some of their tents have suns on them and others have crosses. Also half of the crosses are upside down which goes back to the devil. Every tent has horns on the top which is most likely a reference to oars. Remember that they also have oni masks hung up inside their tent which is part of the traditions. The next hint comes from Bellamy. Bellamy sure has the crossbones with a cross on top of it. This shows once again that the two are linked together. Another hint is in Sabodi Ark. Notice the cross and skulls on one of Hawkins Pirates crew members clothing. Right next to him is someone with an oars mask. All these things are linked together and Oda shows us this many times. In real life, there are many Jesus crosses with a skull and crossbones on them. The skull and crossbones refer to Golgotha Calvary, which is the site where Jesus was crucified. The skull and crossbones in real life can represent Jesus just like how the skull and crossbones represents Jesus in One Piece as well. If you want to speculate even further, the term Golgotha Calvary is the location of where Jesus was crucified and the burial of Adam and Eve. Now how do you get to the One Piece? You need a cross to get there. The four road poneglyphs leads to a cross which in the middle shows the last island's location. Since the Galgada Calvary is supposed to be the burial location of Adam and Eve, maybe, just maybe, the location of the One Piece could be a similar thing. Finding the One Piece could teach you about the origins of humanity, or devil fruits, or the history of the world, just like how Adam and Eve are the origins of humanity according to the Bible. Another hint from Oda is in Drum Island. In Drum Island, both Luffy and Dr. Hiroluk describe the pirate flag as being a symbol of faith. Who else is described in the exact same way? 
Jesus Christ is. Jesus is literally known as the biggest symbol of faith throughout the whole world. Doesn't it also just make sense that Joy Boy is based off of Jesus? I mean Luffy is basically the return of Joy Boy just like how Jesus is said to return one day. On top of this, Jesus lived on the earth three different times. The first time was from his birth to his crucifixion, the second time was three days after he died on the cross, and the Christians believe that the world is currently waiting for his final and third resurrection. In One Piece, the first form of Jesus could have been Joy Boy, the second could have been Goldie Roger who found the One Piece, and the third could be Luffy who will find the One Piece for the final time. These three characters also all had a straw hat which shows they are somewhat the same and carry on each other's will. If you want more on my straw hat proof then check my first video out. At the beginning of One Piece, we always get the impression that Luffy reminds people of Goldie Roger, showing that they are very alike and possibly even the same, just in two different generations. At this point in the story, Luffy is also believed to be the return of Joy Boy. Odin's flashback basically proves that Luffy is Joy Boy because he is living the exact prophecy as of right now. So to sum this up, Luffy, Roger, and Joy Boy all carry on each other's wills and are basically the same version of each other just in different eras. Just like how there are three versions of Jesus Christ. I also believe that this is why Oars and Oars Jr. both wear three skulls. Three skulls symbolizes three versions of the original Joy Boy in three different eras. Everything in One Piece ties back to the Bible and to ancient religions. Now that you know that Urs is both Nika the Sun God and the Jesus figure in One Piece, let's try to put it all together. What else does the One Piece Bible have besides a Jolly Roger and a cross? Well, on the front you can clearly see that there is a sun and wings. This proves that the sun is tied with the ancient kingdom and is also tied with Jesus. Now let's decode the name of the sun god, Nika. Why do you think Oda gave the sun god the name Nika? Where do you think that name is inspired from? The word Nika can mean many things and it all links Jesus with the sun god. First, the word Nika comes from the Greek word which means the victory of Jesus. You can clearly see here that the Greek cross for Jesus has the word Nika on it. All these letters together means Jesus Christ conquers. Nika also can just mean conquer. Just like how Luffy and Joy Boy are conquerors, like conquerors hockey. Remember, Jesus Christ is the king of kings. Just like how Luffy will become the king of the pirates. Kind of like how Urs was most likely the king of kings back in the day. The king of the ancient kingdom. The Latin meaning for the word Nika is belonging to the Lord. Yes, the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Slavic meaning is belongs to God. The Russian meaning is born on Sunday. Yes, Sunday, spelled as sun, day. The day that believers of Christ worship the sun. Or should I say the son of God? Or should I say the sun god? In Japanese, ni means sun and day, while ka means flower. Just like the flower flower fruit user, Nico Robin. Why do you think Oda called Robin Miss All Sunday? She's gonna be the one to figure out the truth and who the sun god is and who the son of god is. The word Robin also means bright fame, which describes the sun. Nico in Japanese means victory. All in all, Robin's name means victory of the sun. By the way, don't get confused with Nika and Niko because they do sound very similar. Nika the Sun God goes all the way back to both the Sun God and the Son of God, Jesus. If you like these translations for Nika, then wait, there's even more. In Japanese, Nika is also the kanji that can describe smiling and laughing, just like how Joy Boy and Luffy smile and laugh, just like laugh, tail. The Sun God and Jesus are the same thing and this is shown in symbolism. In Skypiea, you can clearly see how NL is sitting in front of a Jesus piece which has the sun illuminating from it. Kind of like how the Jesuit order has the sun in their logo. Jesus is the light of the world, the light of the revolution, and the light of the sun. Oda is obviously implying that the sun and the cross are from the same thing. If you watched my first video, Nika is also a scotch brand. Remember the rock and scotch wordplay connections in chapter 666. By the way, just to put it out there, I'm not saying what my beliefs are, but I am saying either what Oda believes or what he based One Piece off of. Oda completely played all of us with the name Nika. How does he know this stuff? Well, I don't know, but he is a complete master of wordplay. Some more hints of Jesus being the devil in One Piece is with the name of the greatest pirate to exist, Gold D. Roger. Remember earlier how I said that Oda claims that Jolly Rogers originate from the devil? Okay, now let's decode one of the wordplays with the name Gold D. Roger. For this wordplay, I will be using the word gold because Gold D is an obvious pun with it. On top of that, he's even called Gold the first time we hear about him, and the world government labeled him as Gold Roger. Well, gold in alchemy symbolizes the sun. 
Yes, One Piece has a lot to do with alchemy, but I'll get more into that in another video because it's kind of off topic here. On top of this, his last name is Roger, just like Jolly Roger, which comes from the devil. Oda also says that the term Jolly Roger comes from the term Old Roger. Old Roger sounds almost identical to Gold Roger. I believe Goldie Roger's name is all about wordplay, you just have to decode its true meaning and origin. So basically, Goldie Roger's name means son, devil. Now that we talked about Goldie Roger, let's also talk about his son, Ace D. Porkaz. Ace is a son of a possible reincarnation of Joy Boy. Ace also has a cross on his back, which also puts up the question, how much does Whitebeard know? Whitebeard is symbolized through the cross, and in his introduction, we learn that he's 666 centimeters tall. Why do we even need to know that? Well, because it's a hint to show that the cross and the devil are in sync with each other in One Piece. Anyways, going back to Ace, he has the fire fruit, which is kind of like the sun. Ace also has the two sides of the same coin reference on his hat, which is also connected to ores. Yes, he has ores on his hat as well. Now his connection to Jesus would be the cross on his back and his fire move, which Oda named Cross Fire. Ace also has a move that is called Sun Flare and another move that resembles the sun. This is all hinting to the fact that the sun god and Jesus are the same thing yet again. Another hint that connects Jesus, Ors, and the sun is from the Elbaf giants. On the Elbaf boats, you can see the sun symbol with eight circles around it, just like in Skypiea and Wano. You can also see a sign of a sun on their boat. Notice how the last sign is also a cross. With all these symbols obviously being connected, they also have oars as their Jolly Roger and wear horned helmets to show who their true leader is. They also have a literal sun god, but I already explained this in my part 3 video. The next hint that combines everything is from the same page from volume 1, chapter 2 that explains the origin of the Jolly Roger. Notice how right on top of the devil, there is a shadowed out pirate. Doesn't this look familiar? It looks almost exactly like the Nika the Sun God image. On the same page that we learned that the Jolly Rogers come from the devil, Oda is also basically saying that Nika has something to do with it as well. This is a very early sketch from Oda, so it's obviously not going to be exactly the same a thousand chapters later, but I don't think the similarities are all a coincidence. Lastly, to connect the sun god Nika to Jesus, I'm going to be discussing a theory in real life which applies to the Aztec sun god Quetzalcoatl and Jesus. I believe this theory is what Oda based a lot of One Piece lore off of and definitely what he based Skypiea off of. Remember how I said earlier that the Shandian Sun God rituals are based off the Aztec Quetzalcoatl rituals. So in real life, when the Spaniards originally showed up to find the Aztecs, the Aztecs thought the Spaniards were sent from their god Quetzalcoatl. The reason they thought this was because the Spanish wore Jesus crosses on them which represents their sun god Quetzalcoatl. Yup, the cross represents the Aztec sun god just like how it represents the son of god, Jesus Christ. That's a story from back in the day, but since then archaeologists and anthropologists have connected many more dots with Jesus and Quetzalcoatl. Let me list some more similarities with the sun god and the son of god. Both were crucified. Both were born from a virgin. Both were resurrected. Both are associated with the light. Both shed their blood to save humanity. Both are transgressors between the earth and the sky, also called the heavens. Lastly, Quetzalcoatl is described to be light-skinned with a beard, just like Jesus. The theory in real life goes that Jesus and Quetzalcoatl were either the exact same story in person, or at least based off the same thing. Well in One Piece, we already know that the Shandian Sun God and Jesus are also the same thing, or at least based off of Ors. I do believe Oda based One Piece off of this theory, and it will all come together by the end. The next hint has to do with Christmas. Why do we celebrate Christmas every year? It's because it's Jesus' birthday, right? Well. That's what society tells you, but actually, Christmas isn't Jesus' birthday. Now once in the Bible was not mentioned that Jesus was born on December 25th, or even in the winter. So why do we celebrate December 25th every year in the name of Christ? Well the real reason is actually because it's a pagan birth date. The true birthday of December 25th belongs to the sun god Mithras. Yes, every year you celebrate Christmas, you are involving yourself in the holy day to the sun not the son of god, how most people say it is. Or maybe, they are the same thing. Kind of makes you wonder why the Pope and Catholic Church worship on December 25th since they should know the truth. Remember, the Society of Jesus has the sun as their logo, kind of like how in One Piece it's the same thing as well. For the final part of my video, I want to explain how the whole world of One Piece worships the devil. Most people in One Piece worship Satan and Jesus at the same time. Oda pulled the ultimate move of irony through this. Let's talk about the real bible for a second and then go back to the One Piece bible and how they are both connected to the devil being Jesus. In case you didn't know, there are multiple English translations of the bible. 
I will be referencing the two most popular ones, which are the King James Version and the New International Version. The older version is the King James Version, and the newer one is the New International Version. In Isaiah 14.12, the King James Version quote-unquote says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? In the same line of Isaiah 14.12, the New International Translation says, How you have fallen from heaven, O morning star, son of the dawn. First, notice how the name Lucifer is replaced by O morning star. Next, notice how the O morning star is referred to as the son of the dawn. Yes, the son of the dawn, tying back with One Piece's son of the dawn. Okay, so now that you know that Lucifer can also be called the morning star, check this out. In Revelations 22.16, New International Version, it says, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright morning star. Yes, Jesus too is also the morning star, just like Lucifer. Just like how in One Piece, the devil, Jesus, and the sun are the same thing. The bright morning star refers to the sun coming up at dawn, just like how in One Piece everything revolves around the dawn of the world. When the morning star comes, the dawn comes, and so does Joy Boy. Now I'm not here to tell you that Jesus and the devil are the same thing, but I'm just saying what Oda bases One Piece off of. Another connection with the sun and Lucifer is in Dress Rosa. Okay, look at this picture of Luffy, and now let's try to decode its esoteric meaning. First of all, it obviously says Lucy, which is another name for Lucifer. Another meaning of the word Lucy is light. On top of this, we see sunflowers. Remember, Nika in Japanese can translate to sunflower. The sunflower obviously represents the sun, especially when it's on Luffy, the new sun god. On top of this, he has a black hat over his straw hat, which symbolizes the darkness and the light together. The straw hat symbolizes the sun, which is the light, and the darkness is Lucifer, or should I say Lucy. The darkness could also symbolize the nighttime or moon. Lastly, when Luffy or Lucy wears this, he later wears it with a golden helmet that has horns. Remember, gold represents the sun in alchemy, and the horns represents the devil and oars. Luffy is the final coming of Joy Boy, who was once oars, and Oda is telling you this with all these symbols. The last amount of evidence with Jesus being the devil and Joy Boy in One Piece is actually very dark and might be a little too extreme for some watchers. If there's any kids out there, I really don't recommend watching this next part because it may be too much and even if it's not, I don't want to be the one that put these images in your head. Anyways, let's once again decode the true meaning of One Piece. Now let me tell you how I know Monkey D. Dragon knows the truth. Okay, so we know what the Bible truly means in One Piece and that it is in fact a major role in the story. Well, back in Robin's backstory, Professor Clover literally says, There is no historical mystery that cannot be unraveled with the help of the documents found here. He also says, After reading ancient manuscripts and the few poneglyphs that have been found, we gradually discovered the existence of a nation of which no trace now remains. These two things that he said proves that you can figure out most mysteries of the One Piece world without ancient documents and books. You don't even need to find the One Piece or read all the Poneglyphs. Now what's arguably the most important book in human history? Well, whether you like it or not, it is the Bible. It's statistically the most sold book of all time. In case you haven't read the actual Bible, it is an all a religious book that can be looked at as a historical document. The Bible is a story of the Jews and a story of humanity. I'm not here to tell you if it's real or not, I'm just saying, if you pick up the Bible and read it, it's basically a story of the Jews in chronological order. Now let's say in One Piece, the Bible is the same thing, but is the real history. Wouldn't it make sense that the library of Ohara used the Bible to figure out some of the truth? It is a work of ancient text. There's just no way they had culture books from throughout the whole world and didn't include the Bible studies to find out what they found. Now, since Monkey D. Dragon had Kuma on his crew, wouldn't it make sense that they figured out some of the truth? Well, I know that they definitely figured out who the true rulers and kings of the world were because of the revolutionary army Jolly Roger. Knowing the true origins of the Jolly Roger, Monkey D. Dragon made his Jolly Roger a literal Jolly Roger, which to Oda is known as the Devil. You can clearly see how the revolutionary flag has oars on it with a crown on the top. Look at the jaws and how the bottom part is bigger than the top, just like oars and just like the stone in Upper Yard. It also has black wings which represents the Lunarians. Oars and the Lunarians were the gods and kings of the world at some point in the past, and Dragon's Flag is basically him telling the world government that he knows the truth without actually telling them. If you haven't watched my first video, then let me tell you that other pirates do this as well, for example Rox and Blackbeard. 
The ancient giants and Lunarians are relics from the past, and Dragon knows that the world government most likely genocided their races to hide them from the world and to keep their place and power. Now where do you think Oda was inspired from this flag and for everything in One Piece? Well this flag of truth is inspired from this, the Baphomet. In case you don't know, the Baphomet is a drawing depicting Satan, also called Lucifer, also called the Devil, also called the Beast. The same Baphomet that the Knights Templars worshipped in real life. Yes, the Knights Templar worshipped the Baphomet even though they were supposed to be a Catholic order. Kind of like how in One Piece, people who put up the cross actually worship the devil. In One Piece, Ors is the devil and the Revolutionary Army's Jolly Roger looks exactly like Ors and is also the Baphomet. Now back to how the flag is the same as the Baphomet. First of all, it has black wings. Secondly, it has the face of the devil, which is Ors. On top of this, it also has the three-piece crown, just like the Baphomet. Monkey D. Dragon knows the truth and he shows us through his Jolly Roger. Notice how the picture of the Baphomet also has a light or fire on top and two crescent moons. Both of these things symbolize the sun god Ors and the moon gods, the Lunarians. Just like how Dragon's flag has Ors and the Lunarian wings in his Jolly Roger. Another detailed hint from One Piece that the Lunarians and Ors race cooperated with each other is from the character Mikazuki. Yeah, who again? Mikazuki is really random and was introduced in Water 7. I don't expect anyone to remember this dude and I think he only exists to be a hint or code in One Piece. First of all, if you take a look at him, he's got Ors teeth and jawline, two sunflowers, white hair and darker skin, and lastly a crescent moon on his hat. The Ors teeth and sunflowers resemble Ors because remember, Ni Ka can mean sun flower in Japanese. The white hair and crescent moon obviously symbolizes the Lunarians. On top of this, let's now break down the name Mikazuki. Mikazuki's kanji can be broken down as three, sun, moon. Three suns and moons? There will be three suns and a moon, three oars and a moon. When the sun and moon are equally distributed, you get the dawn. Kind of like how Toki says right after her alleged death, you are the moon unaware of the dawn. May your purpose be fulfilled. Mikazuki can also just mean crescent moon, which goes back to the Lunarians. Lastly, let's take a look at his bounty. The bounty is 36 million. The only valuable digits would be 3 and 6 since 0 values out to nothing. 3 6 can be broken down as 3 6's. 666, six, six, the number of the beast. 36 is also 6 times 6 if that also shows anything. Since Mikazuki's name and symbolism hint at the dawn, the dawn which is right in between the moon and the sun. For all we know, Luffy could end up being part Lunarian and have the will of the sun god which would make him the dawn as well. Lastly, I want to talk more about Oda's inspirations with two sides of the same coin and why he chose to put it in One Piece. We continuously see the two sides of the same coin reference and it always dates back to Ors. We first hear it with Luffy and Blackbeard indicating that they are the same but also the opposite. Luffy has the straw hat just like how Joy Boy had it and Blackbeard has a Joy Boy reference on his Jolly Roger. After this, we see it with Ace. Ace has a smiling face and then a frowning face linked to his hat which is also linked to an Oni. This once again shows us that the two sides of the same coin from Blackbeard and Luffy links them to Ors. The third time we see the same kind of symbol is literally on Ors the third sails. He has two suns as his flag and they are inverted of each other. On top of this he has his Jolly Roger which is an Ors head and it says his name, Ors the third. Forgot to put this in earlier, but this is another hint from Oda that Ors is the sun god. Okay, so every time the two sides of the same coin reference comes up, it always goes back to Joy Boy or Ors. Now where do you think this reference came from? Well it came from the devil and not the One Piece version. Yup, this term from Oda was inspired from the Baphomet once again. Look at how Satan is pointing to a black moon surrounded by white and a white moon surrounded by black. You can also see black and white snakes which are wrapped around each other to show they're the opposite yet the same. This is literally the same as the opposite inversion which Oda calls two sides of the same coin. You can tell it's the same because in One Piece, instead of using the moons, Oda uses two suns on the only Jolly Roger of a devil that we know of. On top of this, if you search up the meaning of the drawing of the Baphomet, it represents something that's called symbolization of the equilibrium of opposites. That's the exact same thing as two sides of the same coin but put into different words. Luffy and Blackbeard who are the same but also opposites are connected to the Baphomet or Lucifer. There is some more things that I can decode from the Baphomet to One Piece and from Dragon to Ors, but I think this pretty much wraps up my theory. I know this video was absolutely insane and I said a lot of crazy things, but I'm not trying to promote anything religiously. I'm just trying to show the true inspirations of Oda. I'm not trying to offend anyone's beliefs or even throw out my own. 
I only talk about things that I've read about and found, and I really do believe Oda used all of these things to base One Piece off of. Next I'll make a video on how I know the exact devil fruit that Oars had. Anyways, thanks a lot for watching, remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and please have a good day. <laughs>